Hello, YouTube friends. Jamie Hepworth here. Today, I want to invite you to consider what it might be like to be in a three foot by four foot bathroom with seven other women and you are cramped and locked inside for 91 days hiding for your life. Sometimes in life, we feel that the things that we're experiencing are unfair or unjust. Have you ever wondered to God, why me? Why am I going through this experience? Why are things the way that they are? If you've ever had that question come up for you, and I invite you to consider Immaculate Hillebukiza's story because her story holds the answer to why or at least what to do with it. Immaculate found herself inside this tiny bathroom with six other women who were um, of the, the Tutsi tribal heritage amidst the Rwandan Holocaust in, the, in 1994. She ran to hide in that bathroom. She found herself there because she came home for an Easter holiday to spend some time with her family. But she found out that the president of their country had been killed and war was breaking out and mass murder that ultimately led in, led to the death of um, over a million people, a genocide of people from the Tutsi tribe by the Hutus um, opened up to just slaughter and death and terror everywhere in order to protect her her father had instructed her to go hide with her pastor and so she ran to his home and he invited her to come in and to stay in in her in his bathroom with these other women to stay safe um the rest of her family died immaculate talks about the experience of being in the bathroom and and hearing through the window that was high above her head. She said that she heard screaming that wasn't too far from the home where she was staying. And then she heard a baby crying. She said, the killers must have slain the mother and left her infant to die in the road. The child wailed all night. By morning, its cries were feeble and sporadic. And by nightfall, it was silent. I heard dogs snarling nearby and shivered as I thought about how the baby's life had ended. I prayed for God to receive the child's innocent soul and then asked him, how can I forgive people who would do such a thing to an infant? I heard God's answer as clearly as if we'd been sitting in the same room chatting. You are all my children and the baby is with me now. It was such a simple sentence, but it was the answer to the prayers I've been lost in for days. The people who were killing were children is what she determined that though they were expressing horrifically evil behavior, they were being taken over by it, that at the end of the day, they were still children. They still had growing to do. And that wasn't who they really were. Their souls were not evil. And that was a belief that would inspire Immaculate to be a wonderful example of freedom, of through forgiveness and healing through forgiveness. She talked about, you know, learning all of these stories about how all of her family members had been killed. <clears throat> she mentioned at one point that she had an experience while she was stuck in this tiny bathroom, that she was inspired hearing that English speakers may at some point be involved, you know, through the UN or something, she realized she needed to learn to speak English to be a better communicator for her future. And she asked the pastor if she could have a dictionary that was in French so that she could, and also in English, so that she could learn the language from the bathroom. God taught her how to learn the language. And she used her study of the English language for five weeks in this tiny little bathroom to propel her to eventually serve in the UN and also in the, the camp where she was freed by uh, the French. She eventually escaped to a French camp. 
And while she was there, because of her experiences herself and her ability to speak several languages, she was able to record the stories and the horrors of everybody that she knew, some she didn't know, and she didn't know. And she found out the stories of what had happened to her family, and they had been killed. And one of the soldiers who had become friends with her told her, Immaculate, just let me know where I can go. Um, let me know who, who killed your family and anybody that you want me to kill, anybody that you think deserves, you know, what's coming to them, you let me know and I'll go find them and I will hunt them down. Immaculate realized that that experience in the bathroom had changed her because she did not have a desire to send this man, this soldier who was ready and willing to act out all the vengeance that she possibly could unleash. She sincerely wanted him to let it go. And he told her the same thing. How can you not want them to die? They're evil. They're evil. And she said, no, they're not evil. That's not who they really are. They're being taken over by them, by evil, but that is not who they are. Um, and I don't want you to kill anybody in my name. The soldier was confused. <laughs> Um, another friend of hers, after, you know, after things had subsided and calmed down, had brought her to the prison where the man who'd killed several of her family members and had, and had actively hunted for her. She talked about a very terrifying scene where this man was walking around inside her room and calling out her name. I've killed 399 of you and Immaculate, you're next. I'm coming for you. What a terrifying situation. But in the midst of that hunt, of this man coming to find her, and in the height of terror, she fell into a spiritual vision. And she says that she felt like she was flying out of her body like a feather above the other women. And she looked up and she saw Jesus hovering above her in a pool of golden light and his arms were reaching toward me. I smiled and the constant aches and pains that had become part of my body after weeks of crouching disappeared. There was no hunger, no thirst and no fear. I was so peaceful, so happy. And then Jesus spoke to her. He said, mountains are moved with faith, Immaculate. But if faith were easy, all the mountains would be gone. Trust in me and know that I will never leave you. Trust in me and have no more fear. Trust in me and I will save you. I shall put my cross upon this door and they will not reach you. Trust in me and you shall live. In the midst of this man seeking to hunt her down, calling her name, Jesus put a bright white shining cross over the door where they were hiding and, and the man did not find her. Neither did any of the other killers that were in that space. And every woman in that room was protected and was able to go on and live. Um, I think the reason that Immaculate lived and the reason that we all have an opportunity to live is to learn the lesson that Immaculate learned. When she faced the man, um, I believe his name was Samana, in prison, the one who had tried to hunt her down, and the one who had taken out several of her family members and, and many other people, um, she saw him and she went to him and she describes this experience and encounter with him where she tells him, I forgive you. The prison guard who had brought her to see this man was very upset and tried to reiterate the same message that others had told her why why are you forgiving him he's evil he did all these terrible things to your family and and um oh and i i realize i just am in the wrong spot here we go what is this all about immaculate that was the man who murdered your family I brought him to you to question, to spit on if you wanted to, but you forgave him. How could you do that? Why did you forgive him? And this is what she told the prison guard. She said, I answered him with the truth. Forgiveness is all I have to offer. And 
that sentence in reading her story. By the way, the the little excerpts that I read are from Immaculee Illibagiza's book, Love to Tell. That sentence, forgiveness is all I have to offer, is one that has been ringing through my mind and in my thinking about experiences that I have going on personally and just in life in general, about the really hard things that we have to go through sometimes where things don't seem fair or right. And what do you do with them? That said, I've never experienced being stuck in a tiny little bathroom and um, hearing a mother being slaughtered outside my window and hearing her baby starve to death and be eaten by dogs. <laughs> I've never had that experience. But to see an example of a woman who, who kept her heart soft and continued to believe and hope in the good and true potential of every other human being that that is the purpose for which we come to this earth and when, when we're asking the question why me why me there's someone you can forgive there's a situation that you can make right because of your faith in Jesus Christ um when Jesus told Immaculate that mountains are moved with faith Immaculate but if faith were easy all the mountains would be gone <laughs> that is the vision that we are working towards we have been told that there are prophecies that the mountains will be made low and the valleys will be will be elevated how are how is that done it is done through faith in Jesus Christ and trust in him to change our hearts and um, I'm grateful for people whose lives reflect what the power of Christ can do to us and for us. There was a book I read this last year, too. Um, I think it was The Peace Giver. I can't remember who wrote it. But the message was the same. We all, we have different degrees of sinning. Some of us sin in a in a greater way and some of us in a lesser way. But at the end of the day, it is the Savior who makes the balance happen so that, that everything is forgiven. If you have anything to be forgiven, then you are still in need of grace. And if we want grace extended to us, then we must be people who learn to um, to forgive and to extend grace. It's understandable if we choose not to forgive because this is a difficult thing, but it is a godly thing to forgive. And the beautiful thing about it is you don't have to do it alone. even though it may be hard to forgive. And forgiveness doesn't mean that the dynamics of relationships don't change and that you don't keep boundaries in place, but I'm talking about the state of your heart towards other people and your ultimate belief in the triumph of goodness. It's more about the spiritual quality of the way that you think about people and that you think about yourself. When you realize what God has done for you with gratitude and humility, it's a lot easier to let your heart be soft and to let yourself be changed. Anyways, if there's someone that you need to forgive or some situation that you need help with, I know that God loves you and that God can help you through it. And that that will be the story that you can contribute that testifies of God in your life. 
It's understandable if you don't want to do that. But it would be godly if you did. And then you will be empowered by Christ's grace in all that you do, if you allow that. Thank you for letting me cry today. <laughs> My heart's tender today, but I recommend this book and I recommend checking in with your own heart to see where a spirit of tribalism of you versus them has entered in any place and see if you can let Christ level those out for you. I love you. Have a wonderful day, and thank you for your time. Goodbye.